Now the next thing we need to do is get this content here centered in the middle of the slideshow. So right now it's at the top and we need to figure out how to position it in here exactly. Let's look at the design for some inspiration. So how I would interpret this is that the content should be vertically aligned. That means that the top margin and the bottom margin are identical. And then I would think that the padding from the left would be fixed and that this content right here has a fixed width and that the padding on this side would change as the browser got smaller, but this would still be the same width. So kind of like if we just extended this out and if we were making the browser smaller, it would continue to do something like this, where the text itself wouldn't change size, at least not until it needed to. So let's tackle the horizontal part first. We should be able to achieve this with some padding. So let's measure what that would be from the far edge. So it's about 195 pixels from the edge of the slide to the edge of the text. So we'll use that measurement here. So I'll play with it in the browser a little bit. We'll inspect this element. And now where should we add this style? Should it be in the slide section or should it be in the individual item? I'm not exactly sure. If we apply it to the unordered list, then it will automatically cascade to all of the list items, which is nice. So let's say if we highlighted this item and we gave it a padding left of 190 pixels, then everything else falls into place because they're all getting pushed over that 190 pixels. But is it possible that we'll have some slide content that will have a different shape than what we have here? Maybe an image or something that's supposed to stretch all the way across. Well, in that case, we'd still be stuck with this padding left that we'd have to contend with. However, if this padding left was added to the individual list items, then we could just override the styles for that particular list item if we wanted to. So to me, that approach makes a bit more sense. So I'm going to add that style in here in our slideshow CSS. And the selector I'm gonna use is to use the parent slideshow selector and then the child slides and then the child list items here. That way it's specific enough to this structure that we won't inadvertently affect that CSS later when we start to style our other slideshow on this page. So I'll add these selectors down here and I'm gonna add dot slides and then a child selector and li. And we'll add the padding left of 190 pixels. But I think this should be a relative measurement. So I'll do px2 rem. I'll save that and refresh in the browser. Okay, so now we're bumped over. However, when we see these slides moving from slide one to slide two, we're seeing that padding become cumulative. So the first one has a padding left of 190 pixels, but then it gets double that for the next one. So this approach isn't going to work. And this is one example of why it's tough sometimes to work with third-party libraries. We'd love to take a certain approach because it fits with our principles and the structure we're using for our code, but sometimes it just doesn't work with other libraries. So we have to find some alternative approach. So let's scrap this idea. I'm gonna remove this style and save it in the browser and refresh the browser. 